science time. Um, we're going to talk today about common ancestry. I'm going to use a different color besides this one. What would be a good color to use, do you reckon? Purple. What? Red. Oh, purple. I always use purple. I like purple. Common ancestry. I got lots of purple. Common ancestry. We are... We're all related, that's, and that's a beautiful thing, just like Pocahontas says. We're all related. You can't, um, the, the earth, all life on earth is one thing, and that, that's beautiful to me. Um, and the evidence for this is what we're going to talk about today. So common ancestry means, what's, well, first of all, what's an ancestor? Uh, someone, you're, someone you're related to from a very long time. One of the people in the previously progenitored you. I don't know what to say, you know, like th these people coupled and came together and made you, that's your parents. Uh, let's actually just start our little chart with that, but you say what you want to say, Ty. One of your family members. One of your family members from a long time ago, yeah. Gunner. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, here's you. This is what you look like. This marker's about dead. You can't see that at all on the camera. Yeah, somebody who, maybe not, certainly not started your family, but somebody, thanks, um, somebody who sometime in the past produced an offspring, which eventually those offsprings continuing to produce offsprings produce you. Here's you. This is what you look like. Um, nice, you have four legs. Uh, here's your head. Uh, okay, and you came from parents, presumably. They looked like this. Okay, so in your past you had parents. You have what if if your parents had other siblings? If your parents had other siblings, they came from those parents too. And these people are your what do you call them? Yeah, brothers and sisters. Your siblings, right? Your siblings. Your parents, each of them, came from some other people, right? And these are your aunts and uncles, and those aunts and uncles coupled to make these people, which are your cousins. cousins. Okay, and if we keep going back, and eventually we'll run into something like this, where your great, 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 pretend there's several generations here, but maybe your great, 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 great grandpa, which you know nothing about, and your, on your mom's side, that great, 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 great grandma were married. And, and so that at some point, everyone, it's reckoned that the, if you just have a random person on the street that you meet, you're probably at most fifth cousins with them. That would be like over here, these people are your second cousins. You are kind of aware of how this works. These are your first cousins that came from your grandparents. If you share grandparents with someone, they're your first cousins. You're with me so far. If you share great grandparents with someone, they're your second cousins. If you share great, great, great grandparents with someone, they're your third cousins. It's estimated, and there's a lot of research that back this, backs this up, um, that if you just meet some random person, they're probably at most, in some way, your fifth cousin. You probably share great, 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 great grandparents with them. The law, in case you were wondering about inbreeding, so that some of these people only ain't got but one arm, like you do, because you're inbred. Uh, I'm just kidding. You're probably not. Although, if you are, this would be a real hot take if I were actually saying that. But anyway, um, in order to prevent this, there are laws where you can't marry your first cousin. It's against the law. They won't let you. That's not true in all states. In this state, it is. In some states, you can't marry your second cousin. It's illegal. It's against the law. Because your offspring have a higher chance of genetic disposition to problems. But almost everywhere you can marry your third cousin. And if they outlawed marrying your fourth cousin, you probably, my wife might be my fourth cousin. I don't know, because the point is, this, these people were hundreds of years ago. Not only I know who they are, but it's, it's, I could go back and find out, maybe. But it would be pretty difficult to. Probably 100 years from now, it'll be easier to find what who your fourth or your great 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 grandparent was because there's records right now. But we're talking about hundreds of years ago already. Okay? So but the point of all this is that if we go far enough back, keep going back, eventually all of humanity is related. We're maybe, I don't know, I'm gonna throw out a wild guess, but maybe at most the most distant cousin you could possibly have who's a human being might be your fifteenth cousin. You see what I'm saying? If we go far enough back, because you understand, if we go far enough back with these people, they have common ancestry. If we go far enough back with these people, they have common ancestry. Okay? Is this chart kind of making sense to you? So let's define common ancestry. Common 
ancestry is just sharing what? Sharing, sharing genetic yeah. ancestors. Their genes are inside of you. Sharing genetic ancestors. No one disagrees about this. This is a, this is a real. This is not even a realm of science. You're kind of, no no one no one's Facebook uncle is going to say, "Hey, there ain't no such thing as cousins." Right? Everyone agrees with this. You know there are cousins. You have cousins. Who doesn't have a cousin? Raise your hand if you do not have one cousin. You liar, Whitley. I've met your cousins in person. There were one, there was one in my room this morning. Uh, I you all have cousins. No one disagrees about this. Okay, now here's where it gets dicey. Here's where people do start to disagree. Evidence suggests that if we go far enough back then, further back, that not only, I'm going to erase, 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 erase. You probably have heard of this, um, something like someone saying, oh, the, uh, a cousin of the dog is a seal. And, and that's true. And we're going to talk about why in a second. Not, not literal cousins. But if we go about far enough back. So here, instead of you, we'll still, let's still draw it like you. This is what you look like. <clears throat> Well, here's your head. Remember that? Instead of, instead of this being you, this is human being. This is all of humanity. Okay, you're with me so far. And once again, let me remind you, this is, I have a whole video where I started like 20 minutes of rambling about this. I'm not asking you to just believe this at face value. Mr. O says, he told me that, after I told him about that, he said that what he tells you is, don't, you don't have to believe anyone. Don't just take what the teacher or anyone says. Yeah, that's true. Just, if you, first of all, we can discuss those later, you and I personally. We don't need to have them be everyone's business. Second of all, I'm not asking you to believe this at face value. I'm asking you to take this evidence, which the book is presenting, and we're going to talk about the evidence, and use that in your little brain with all the other evidence you have to formulate, formulate an idea that may or may not be true. And this may or may not be true. And your idea you already have may or may not be true. There is a truth. I'm not, I'm not trying to say... The truth is relative. I hate that. People are always like, my truth is blah, 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 whatever it is. I don't believe in that at all. There is a truth, but I don't know exactly what it is, and you don't know exactly what it is. So the best we can do is take all the evidence, which I'm going to give you some, and make an opinion. Okay? Do you understand? Do you have questions about that before we begin? Okay. Well, we've already begun. But we already talked about the thing no one disagrees about. Now we're going to talk about the things that some people do disagree about. So here's human beings. Instead of you, this is human beings now. Okay? And here is pantroglodytus, which is a chimpanzee. And this is what chimpanzee looks like. <laughs> it's also a high heel. <laughs> chimpanzee slash high heel. And there, these are not... Did, you, did your sister give birth to you? No. So some people, the reason this gets dicey... The, please don't answer that. If the answer is yes, we, you got bigger problems. Um, um, At least I don't. But no, no, listen. So. But listen. The, the, where people, where this gets dicey, and you... Some of you have said this before is, and I hear these stories about people saying, well, I didn't evolve from a monkey. And you, well, you didn't. This, this is not, you, your sister did not give birth to you, and your ancestor is not a chimpanzee. That's wrong. That, and that's, and no one thinks that. Well, uh, some people think that, and they think, I can't believe that, and I'm not going to go to no school. Um, but that is not what, what, what evidence suggests. But what evidence uh, does suggest is that these two things share a common ancestor, whatever it is. Some... Some monkey Godzilla thing. I don't know. doesn't matter. But there is some common ancestor here. Evidence suggests that. What kind of evidence, you ask yourself, what kind of evidence would suggest that me and a monkey have a common ancestor? Which you do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One thing. Evolution is this entire principle. So all of this, we can make this all, this is all called evolution. That is not a piece of evidence. This is a body. This is a theory based on all the evidence we have. Fate. You had an excellent one. What is it? Genetics. Genetics. Um, genetic code. You know about genetic code. Genetic code is kind of like this book. Um, in the same way that, how many letters are there in the, in the English alphabet? 26. 26. This is only 26 letters, but all of these are different ideas from what are in Harry Potter number one, the Sorcerer's Stone, right? But it's uses the same exact number of letters. So how can only 26 letters make these totally different ideas? Well, in the same way that genetics is kind of like, and we'll get into more into genetics later, but genetics is made of uh, genes. There are only four kinds of specific nucleotides. Um, let me see if I can remember them. Adenosine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. There are only four. And those four things can make different genes that then code for 
20 some amino acids you guys remember last year? I don't know, there are a certain number of amino acids, and those can code for literally billions of different kind of proteins, okay? So it's kind of like the, the letters are kind of like the different kinds of genetic codes there can be. Then the words, which there are in English, there are a million different words, those are kind of like the amino acids. And then this entire document is kind of like protein. It's, it's a gajillion different ways. So even though there are only four nucleotides, genetics are kind of like the code for an organism. So this has some certain code. And maybe this code, in analogy, is kind of like Harry Potter Volume 1. Okay? It's a, it's a book. We're, we're relating genetic code to kind of books. Does, does this analogy follow with you so far? And maybe this one is like Harry Potter Volume 2. They are not the same. But they are similar, right? Then one might be better than the other. This one's better at math. This one's better at swinging from vines. But, but, the, but as genetic codes, as genetic codes, these two are similar. Well, how is that evidence that there's a common ancestor? Well, we can compare them to something else, something way over here, something somewhat unrelated, like a banana. This is kind of like a receipt from Dollar General in our in our analogy of written things. It's still a document. But it's not very strongly related to this. So what does this evidence suggest? It suggests that these two things are genetically similar. And this thing is not really that genetically similar. It's still a document. Still, there still are genes. But well, how is that evidence that they have a common ancestor? Well, because their genes are close together. So one is similar genetics. We can see the genes of an organism. And what do genes lead to? When, when genes are expressed as proteins, that eventually leads to the what's of an organism. Traits. It really so traits. So similar traits. Are there similar traits between? Okay, let's be straight up. There are some people who are a little bit simian, which means an adjective that means monkey. Some people look kind of like a monkey, and that's okay. But but you can see how there are similar. What are some similarities in traits between humans and any kind of ape? What are some similarities? What are, what are some things they have in common? Big ears. Okay, shape of ears, maybe to some extent. What else? Yeah, face shape. They both have arms. Do all organisms have arms? Hands. No. So see, we're finding the things that are the same about these two, even if they're not exactly the same, that are different from other organisms. What else? Hands. Hands. And we call these things homologous structures. Let's, and we're going to define that. Homologous structures means, what's a homolog in English? You remember? No. Well, okay, thanks, Gabe. Uh, kind of like a homonym. It means homo means same, as you know from homosexual, which means someone who prefers the same sex. Homo means same. So these structures, these things that make up the organism, are the same. What are some examples? Teeth, limbs, hair. You ever see a hairy? You ever see a hairy dude? Yeah. Levi maybe. Monkeys are kind of chimpanzees. Apes are kind of like. Harry people, I mean they're not, they're not the same. Harry Potter 1, Harry Potter 2. They're not the same, but they are, they have homologous structures. The patterns of hair on even a not very hairy person, you have hair on your face, even if you're a girl, you have hairs on your face. And if you look at the patterns, if you were to be able to, I don't know, dye the hair on your face, and the hair all over your body, instead of having white little hairs on your hands, you have hairs, you would see that the, the fur patterns on a person are the same as the fur patterns, are similar to the fur patterns on an ape. Because we are in the same family as apes. In fact, the homo sapien, the, the family hominid, is, is included in the family primates. Yes? Unrelated question. No, why do you keep your hand up for 15 minutes asking unrelated Please try to make it related. Otherwise, don't ask it. It's about bananas. Nope. No. <laughs> no, but is it Kay. true that they produce antimatter? No. What? No, what about homo To some extent, stop talking about that. Homo sapiens means the same. It's the hominids or the group of people who are the same as us. Homo. Okay. So, then this common ancestor, which is not either a human or an ape, here's a common ancestor with something else that's even slightly less related. What, are, what, what, what might be something else that's related to humans and apes, but not as related as humans and apes are together? As, as opposed to banana, which is somewhat unrelated. <coughs> What other kind of or what kind of critters might also be related to us well, further away? Squirrel, sure. Other other what's? Mammals. Yeah, other mammals. And how? Oh no! It really took a time. It started out pretty good. The tail was nice. This is supposed to be a squirrel. Can you think of a book example? We had books as our kind of analog for genetic code. 
Oh, not really. Harry Potter 3 would be more like a baboon or some a gorilla, some other I, kind I, of I, I know exactly. Minecraft is not a book. Harry Potter I know exactly three. what it is. Yeah. Um, Percy Jackson. Good. Okay, so this is kind of like Percy Jackson. It's still it's still a book. We could say that like a mammal. It's still a book. It still has genetic codes, but it, and it's more similar than a Dollar General receipt. Yeah, it still has mythical And it still has mythical creatures. It's still young adult fiction. But it is not the same. It's not even the same series. Do you see what I'm getting at here? How these little chunks, the genes, code for proteins, which are kind of like these books, and they are evidence. Does that mean this must be true once again? No, but they are evidence that support this. This is the most, what we call, parsimonious theory. This is the theory that best includes all of the evidence and rejects all the stuff that isn't evidence. Yes, ma'am. Also, the folks who decide. Thanks. Okay, look at look with me on um, your exploration sh exploration one of lesson three. Stop talking and listen to me. Look with me on exploration one, lesson three. There's a diagram here of so the common ancestor shared by all. Are you going to do this or not? Look in exploration one of lesson three. There's a diagram which you should have done already because the explorations were due. Um, you, but there's a diagram. Or you, you were to have been doing them. They weren't due, but you were to have been doing them. Anyway, there's a diagram of the skull shapes of whales, hippopotamus, and several things that are in between. Look off of Kimber's. Okay, but are you going to look at the thing I asked you to look at? So th I'm looking at this diagram. We can, here, I'm going to put it on the camera. You can, if you're watching this on video, you don't have access to exploration through. You can freeze it and you can look at it. There's a little tree here. Of, nope, none of those are dinosaurs. None of those is a dinosaur, I should say. Um, but there's a diagram of kind of a tree of life, and that's kind of what I'm getting at here. This is a tree of life. Where the, the branches are individual organisms, and then the junctions are common ancestors. Yes? Um, I have a question that's sort of related and sort of not. Could you save it until after the video so we can get this kind of neatly defined so that we don't have any concerns? What was the common ancestor of hippopotamus and baleen whales? Can you tell from that? No. Come on. It's, would you please just follow along and do as I asked you to do? So looking at the chart, Find hippopotamus and find baleen whale. What is their common ancestor? <laughs> yeah, say its name. Anthracotherium. It says it right underneath it. Anthracotherium. Anthracotherium. What happened is, look at, can you find uh, Rhodocetus? It's kind of in the middle. Rhodocetus. How long ago did Rhodocetus live? How long ago did Rhodocetus live, according to that diagram, which you can... Rhodocetus looks like the evidence suggests that the first fossils are found of Rhodocetus about 47 million years ago. When did Rhodocetus go extinct? I would say a little bit younger than about 42 million years, because that's where its little line ends. What on of the of the organisms on here? Which ones are extant? That means not extinct. Which three organisms are extant? Hippopotamus, baleen whale, and there's one more. Toothed whales. So, and are those are those things? Do, are their structures the same? N no, but they are what? They're not exactly the same, but they are. Similar, they're similar, especially the toothed whale and the baleen whale have similar structures. So where does Pachycetus and Rhodocetus and Cuchocetus, where do those all come in? What are those things? If, they, if they're not still alive, how do we even know about them? Fossils. Okay, so that's the other piece of evidence. Fossils, and especially, and we talked about this in the last video, but fossils of intermediate, that's not the word I, the, the book used, what was, what did we, what did we call the fossils of, of the link one organism to another, do you remember? Because I had forgotten. What was it? This should be in your notes. Transitional fossils. Fossils of transitional organisms. 
Did the hippopotamus evolve from the toothed whale? No. They did what, though? How, are they related? Yes, because they share a common ancestor, just like, just like what I said before. Your sister didn't give birth to you, but you have a common ancestor. AKA your parents, yeah. What, just by thinking about, we don't know, we can't look at their genetic code, or you and I can. We, there are ways to do it, but we can't. But looking at the traits, what do you think is more similar? Um, let's do this. Fish, just a general kind of fish, and snake. Or, fish and palm tree. Please, please let me just be. I'm just trying to help you guys learn something for crying out loud. Which one is probably more closely related? Fish and snake. How do you know? Because they're both what? No. The palm tree's alive, too. I didn't draw a dead palm tree. They're both... No. They're both animals. They're both animals. They're both animals. They both move. That's a genetic trait. Do all organisms move? No, not all organisms move. Movement is a trait of what kind of organisms? Living. No. Animals. Why do you guys always forget? This is alive, Gabe. Palm tree is alive. And he can't move under his own power. Okay, so they're both animals. So they're more closely related. So they have... Do, do fish and palm tree have a common ancestor? Yeah, because they're both alive. But that, that common ancestor is farther back than the common ancestor of fish and snake. What's more, just by looking at their traits, what's more closely related? Uh, Velociraptor and eagle, or Velociraptor and human being? Velociraptor and eagle. Yeah, why do you think that? Because, uh, um, they have similar what? Be, be more specific. I don't really care about this. No. They have similar, they have similar traits. traits, and that means they must have had similar genetics, and that means their, their common ancestor was more recent than the common ancestor of, what did I other thing I said, velociraptor human beings, okay? Do you see how this all kind of fits together? Does anyone have a question about how this all fits together? There are, there are um, more examples in your book and there's one last one we're gonna talk about, yes? Mm -hmm. Yep, the last one we're gonna talk about is embryology. What is that probably the study of? It, nope. Embryology. What is it probably the study of? Um, yes, it is evidence for that. This is the study of embryos. Have you ever heard of an embryo? What's an embryo? Yeah, it's a part of an egg, but it's all organisms. Um, all animals, I should say. All animals start out as an embryo, which is an unborn organism. Mm -hmm. There are... Uh, the, the first division of embryos is embryos can either be protosome or deuterosome. And the, both, both embryos start out as a little circle. And then eventually that circle gets either one hole or two holes in it. In a deuterosome, it's two holes. In a protosome, it's one hole. And this protosome uh, eventually be becomes organisms like insects, other arthropods like crabs, uh, the, the platyhelminthes, all kinds of parasites, basically that, that whole clade of organisms, sponges. And then the deuterosome can become things like uh, animals in general. Uh, I don't mean animals. I mean mammals and birds and reptiles. Vertebrates. That's what I'm trying to say. Vertebrates. Um, and this is the most basic difference. And then as the embryo develops, uh, let's think about a, a, in order to make it not too on the nose, let's, let's think about an elephant embryo. So the, el the elephant embryo develops these two holes. And then eventually as it grows, it kind of takes on this little shape. And here's its little brain that's starting to develop. And here's its spinal cord, which is a notochord at this time. And this this is a reflection of almost this whole thing is kind of the, the development of an embryo is kind of like a mirror image of the evolutionary process. So 
it starts as a single cell, or two cells, you know, making this point. It starts with two cells, but it starts as this blastoma that is, or blastoma might be the wrong word. Blastocyte? I can't remember. Um, look it up and put it in the comments. Comments are disabled for this video. But it starts out as a, as a single cell, or a group of cells, a small group of cells, reflecting evolutionary trend from single-celled organisms to multi-celled organisms. Right? The cells continually divide, and at first, it takes on this shape that's almost like that of a larval sponge or some other invertebrate. And then it becomes this, which is almost like the shape of a fish. Right? It has a, it has a little tail here. and fin. It does have little limbs, but the limbs are fin-like at this time. And then it'll take on the shape, the, the gill slits will turn into a pharyngeal pouch, which is almost like an amphibian. I kind of drew the same thing here, but the gill slits turn into this pharyngeal pouch, which is like an amphibian. And then, as it continues to develop, the, the, the lungs will form, and its brain starts to develop more like that of a reptile. In fact, a lot of people, even in psychology, will call the hind part of our brain, the back part of our brain, the reptile brain. And it's, you have a, a, the basal part of your brain, which is responsible for things like breathing, uh, heartbeat, digestion, things that were, would be developed right here, that, that a fish can do those things. Right? It respirates, it doesn't breathe through lungs, but it respirates, its heart beats, etc. And then, as the reptile brain develops, that starts to be things like uh, the fight-or-flight response. Where, like, you, so sometimes in psychology we'll say, like, oh, oh, this person is just operating on their reptile brain, which means really they're just operating on instinct. They're, like, maybe something bad happened to them, so they murdered their neighbor, and that was just instinct at that time. They could plead in a court of law that was temporary insanity. But they were only able to use their reptile brain at that time. Okay? Anyway, as it continues to develop, more and more features get added, and it starts to be, yeah, and eventually, eventually the elephant starts to have all the organs that a big elephant has, just smaller, and then eventually, by the time it's born, it's got all the elephant, this is a good drawing, this class is all about how good I am at drawing, um, it has all the features of an elephant. And one, one way that we use this as evidence for common ancestry is that all embryos go through this, it's just that some of them stop, like, here. And then it, it, that's born, and it's a fish. No. This one's born, and it's a um, mammal, mammal thing, I don't know. But you see kind of how this reflects yeah. the evolutionary trend? And I think all this, this is beautiful, the common answer is we we're all one thing. Life is one thing, you know, you should be respectful of your dog and fish and uh, an elephant you should because you're they're alive just like you are we're all one critter uh we're all trying to survive on this little planet as it floats through space and we're trying not to kill each other some of us are trying to kill other people but um anyway do you have questions about any of this and once again this is i don't i'm not convinced that this is the whole truth and you don't have to be either but this is the evidence that suggests this theory which remember theory does not just mean a guess this is not just a guess. It's, it's the explanation that fits all this evidence the best. We know that the evidence... No one, no one has the opinion that the evidence is 100% fleshed out. This is what we call a theory that involves the change of one organism over time into another to adapt to its environment. Do you have questions? No. Do you see what, how the evidence suggests that? Do you see how this evidence fits with this theory? Bye!